Amen. For those of you that are, that are visiting this morning, Mother Hash was not able to be here this morning, and so we're, we're going to celebrate Mother's Day twice. So we're going to do a little something today, and then we're going to do something as well next Sunday. Praise God. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers here today. God bless you. <clears throat> I have, I'm going to read a poem written by Angela Ciro. Thank you, God, for my mother, the love she shares like no other. Thank you, God, for her tender care. With my name upon her lips as she goes to you in prayer. Thank you, God, for dishes so very clean the teaching and the nursing and the love I've always seen. Thank you, God, for the food that she provides, the hugs and the kisses and the tears she often hides. Thank you, God, for the stories she always tells about gardens and boats and people inside of whales. Thank you, God, for the mom you assigned to me. For you knew no other could love me so unconditionally. Thank you, God, for you knew right from the start exactly which woman should take and hold my heart. Thank you, God, for another chance to say, I love you, dear mother. Have a happy Mother's Day. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mother Dorothy Speaks. Well, without further ado, I have the awesome honor of introducing to some and presenting to others one of the gifts is in this house. We thank God for this awesome woman of God. She is on our staff, and she does it all. I think she is special forces all in one. We thank God for this gift. And if you know her, evangelism is close to her heart. Missions is her heart. One of the other gifts that this awesome woman has is the ability to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ. Enjoy with me this awesome gift of God, the evangelist, Brenda Kearney, as she brings our Mother's Day message. Good morning, and happy Mother's Day. On behalf of our honorable and loving spiritual parents and pastors, Bishop James C. and Lady Joyce Hash, who are not able to be here today, as Pastor Jason stated, but they send their heartfelt love and prayers to everyone, and especially the mothers. You know, normally when I would get up, I would say something like, well, I am the ram in the bush today. But I thought about it. That ram was slaughtered, so I am not the ram in the bush, amen? <laughs> amen, I am just one of the many spiritual children. And we want to send out a special Happy Mother's Day blessing to our loving, selfless, generous, wise, beloved mother, Lady Joyce, who sacrifices much and is the epitome of love and righteousness. Amen. We love you, Lady Joyce, and we miss you today. But I also would like to thank Mother Joyce's children, Cherie, Virginia, Pastor J.C. Jr., and Pastor Mill for sharing their mother with us. Thank you, thank you. And with much love, 
we wish our saintly mother in Zion, God-fearing mother, Mildred Hash, a happy Mother's Day. <clears throat> mother Hash will always pray for you. And now, again, happy Mother's Day to Lady Joyce Hash and all mothers. Mothers who birth the children, their children, and raise them, or mothers who, ra who raised them but didn't birth them. Whether you are a birth mother or a mother who adopted children or a foster parent or mother or a mother who helped raise the church's neighbors and friends' children or a mentor mother who has imparted countless hours of love, inspiration, spiritual and educational guidance to children. You are a mother, and we say Happy Mother's Day to you. <laughs> See, the way a child was born does not automatically qualify or identify who is a mother. By the Spirit, Someone is probably saying, I am not a mother because I didn't birth any children. Well, I have a question for you. Have you ever won any souls? A personal testimony. When I was in my mid-30s, I found out I would never be able to give birth to a child. I was pretty upset, and shortly thereafter, I attended a church conference out of state. I wasn't even interested in attending the conference, but it was an all-expense-paid trip. And at the conference, I heard this teacher say, Priscilla and Aquila were parents. And immediately, I said to myself, under my breath, you are lying, they were not parents. But the Holy Spirit had the teacher to immediately say, yes, they were parents, they were great parents, they birthed souls into the kingdom. How great of a parent than you can be than to birth souls into the kingdom. So today, I stand before you as a proud birth mother. But I don't know how many children I have, but I am a mother. I declare unto you right now, if you have led anyone to Christ, consider yourself a birth mother because you did birth souls into the kingdom. So again, we salute you and we honor you. And as uh, most of you may know, Mother's Day was started in 1914 by a lady named Anna Jarvis who wanted to honor her mother. So that year it was made a national holiday the second Sunday in May. But as a topic today is motherly sacrifices, motherly sacrifices, desire, decisions, and destiny. Desire, decisions, and destiny. See, and before I get started, a lot of the resources I've used today, some came from different commentaries, theologians' work that I've read, the Greek, um, Hebrew Bible, just in many different, trans, many different translations. But a mother is a female, a person who has born children, a childbearer. Motherly is, motherly is an adjective, affectionate, careful, caretaking, comforting, devoted, fun, gentle, kind, loving, maternal, nurturing, protecting, protective, sheltering, 
supporting sympathetic, tender, warm, and watchful. Motherly conveys all of these words. They are the characteristics of what a mother is, but you can have all these characteristics without even giving birth. A woman can be a mother, but not motherly. And a woman can be motherly, but not a mother has not given birth. As Apostle Paul told Timothy, he told him, he says, do the work of an evangelist. He wasn't telling him to be an evangelist, but he was saying, do the work. So what we're saying as a mother, whether you have given birth or not, you can do the work of a mother. Motherly sacrifices, desire, decisions, and destiny. One of my favorite stories is about Moses' birth. And in Exodus, first chapter, 15th and 16th verse, Pharaoh the king gave a word, and this word was an order that the Hebrews midwives, the Hebrew midwives, wives would destroy the little baby boys when they were born. He wanted to kill the baby boys, the Hebrew boys. This king was concerned about the increased number of Hebrews as a military threat. He wanted to stop the growth of, he, of the Hebrew population. He was afraid, he was fearful. This was an evil command by the enemy, but a righteous desire by God-fearing women choosing to make godly decisions involving destiny. And I think about you as mothers. All your life, you've made decisions for the better of your children. That's what it was all about. You put yourself last to make them first. But because these women feared God more than man, they disobeyed the king's order. And, and like in the book of Acts, they knew we must obey God rather than human authority. And I think of a lot of times when it comes to, I think about my own mama. I think about how she had to sacrifice and obey God in raising seven little children because my father died when my mother had seven little children and we were from 11 months old to 13 years old. My mother had never worked a day in her life. My father got sick one day and he was dead the next day. She made a lot of sacrifices. She did what a lot of people thought she shouldn't do. She was told, why don't you give some of them away? Why don't you let some of them stay with this one and stay with that one? But she decided, as long as I have breath in my body, as long as I can work, as long as there's a God who sits high, she said, I'm gonna keep all my children. And she kept us, even though people didn't understand, because she was 34 years old, seven little children. But a lot of times when, when we're making decisions, when parents make decisions, you can't make decisions based on other people's opinion because that's what God has told them, but is that what God has told you about your situation and your children? And when it talks about obeying, this morning I heard God's word so clearly. And he says, we have to realize, even though kids might be old, children might be old now, all the ones who are growing up young, we still have to put, remember the fear of God. Because Jesus said in Matthew 10, 28, fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. He says, but rather fear them which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Who do you fear? 
Who do you fear? Do you fear man? Who do you fear? See, the midwives didn't fear man. They fear God. And this day in time, I told someone, I am so glad I'm not a child in this day and time because there is so much pressure. But who do you fear when it comes to your desires? Who do you fear when it comes to decisions that have to be made? Who do you fear when it comes to the destiny of your children? Who do you fear? In Exodus um, verse 2 and 1, Before I move to two and one, I just heard the Lord say, and with the midwives, they were commanded by the king to kill the boys, but they feared God and they didn't. And then it's not on the PowerPoint, but I think when he gets to the 21st verse, it says that because the midwives would not kill the boys, then Pharaoh, which is a title of kings, then Pharaoh went to his people, the Egyptians, and said, I want you to kill all the boys, drown them, throw them in the river. And as I read that, I was thinking, Lord, how many people were not like the midwives? How many of them feared man? So they went on and did what man said, versus what God says. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, as mothers, whether it was years ago, or mothers going through right now, there have been things that people made you do regarding your children that you didn't want to do, that you didn't have the desire to do, but there was somebody in a greater authority than you, so you went on and said yes, but it's a decision that you have regretted most of your life. It's a decision that when Mother's Day come, instead of bringing happiness, it brings sadness to you. Amen? Amen. And right now, you just didn't have the strength to say, no, I don't want to do this. So God is saying today, you have the strength. You have the strength to let it go. Today, you have the strength to say, I wasn't walking in righteousness back then. I wasn't in right standing with God back then, but I am now in right standing with God. I can now let this thing go forever. I can bury it. Right now, I want every mother and every mother, whether you've had kids, didn't have kids, if you have raised anybody, you have mentor, please stand, all mothers. All mothers. And you're going to stay right in your seat, but all mothers. See, God knows who's here today. You didn't have the strength back then because it may have been a parent who had authority over you and say, you have to do this. It may have been a relative. It may even have been a boyfriend or a husband who t made you do something that you didn't have the strength to say no. But today... I want you to just repeat after me. Say, Lord, Lord I, am I am stronger today, stronger today than, I was then. than I was then. I have the right standing with you, right standing with you. Today. today. Lord, I thank you, Lord, I thank you. That, I that I will be able to enjoy Mother's Day from this day forward. Forgive me for not having enough strength. Forgive me for making the wrong decision. Forgive me for listening to the wrong people. But thank you for your mercy, for your grace, because it is bigger than any 
decision that I made that was not like God. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. Thank you, thank you. And Exodus 2 and 1 says, about this time, a man and woman from the tribe of Levi got married. The woman, Jochebed, who is Moses' mother, became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She saw that he was a special baby. In other words, he was healthy. And she kept him hidden for three months. She kept him hidden for three months. And when I read that, she was a mother under difficult situations. Think about you, parents. Some of you have been under difficult situations raising your children. The, the father may have been present or not. The children may have been in trouble or not. You may not have had enough finances or not. There could have been many reasons, but you were in difficult situations. But sometimes, even though you might get in a difficult situation, you still have to do what's right for your child. And I think about um, Pharaoh, I mean Moses' mother, Jochebed. She hid him in, I like to think of, protected custody, where he could not be seen or heard. And I know sometimes, as children, we have wanted to go places and do things. And so uh, instead of telling our friends, my mama is not letting me out of the house, we just stayed in the house. So we were hidden from the truth. But sometimes mothers just kept us there because they said, I don't have, the, I don't have a good feeling about that. How many of your mothers ever told you she didn't have a good feeling about something? Amen? And usually, mother is right. And so she hid him in protected custody. And the strangest thing about it, it was quite obvious, no one heard him cry or do anything. Do she would have been killed and the baby if they knew she had him. We didn't understand it when our mom said no a lot of times, but we realize now that they were protecting us from unseen danger, hurt, harm, and disappointment. Violence, drugs, gangs, guns, and it goes on and on and on. So we want to say thank you, mothers, for protecting us because you had the right desire, you made the right decision, and because you had our destiny in mind, you saved our lives. You saved our lives. Look at everybody around you. Just look at them. It had to be a mother, a mentor, somebody that kept us alive. Because if the truth be told, some of us wouldn't be here if it wasn't for somebody's prayers, if it wasn't for mama's prayers. If the truth be told, I think there's a song or something that says, I would have been dead a long time ago if somebody hadn't prayed for me. The mothers in the church, thank you mothers. Our parents, thank you, thank you. Thank you. It is just the grace of God. It is just the grace of God. I have to tell on myself. I remember, I have to be transparent. I, I, I wasn't saved then, y'all. Said she wasn't saved. <laughs> I remember I was um, going deep sea fishing with some friends. And we were just driving fast. We had been drinking, we had been smoking, <laughs> and we were driving in a little vet going about 150 miles around this mountain. And, and the week before, I had read a story where five kids had gotten killed in a car accident, and all they said about the accident was, that all we found was beer bottles, bottles, wine bottles, and drugs. 
And even though I wasn't saved, I hadn't lost, I, well, I wasn't saved, but I still had a reverence of right and wrong. And as we were driving around that road, speeding and drinking and everything, all I could think of was, Lord, please, don't let me die tonight. Don't let me get killed. I don't want my mama to get a report saying she died drinking. See, and I know you're saying that happened to you, Brenda, but guess what? It happened to some of y'all too. It wasn't just me. Yours may not have been drinking, but it may have been something else. So you need to thank God for grace and mercy. Amen? Thank him. Thank him for that grace and mercy. And thank you, mothers, for praying for us, even when we weren't even in your sight. Thank you. Desire your decision. Her desire, Moses' mom's desire to see her child live caused her to make a temporary decision that would impact his destiny. To make a temporary decision that would impact his destiny. In verse 3, it says, But when she could no longer hide him, she got a basket made of papyrus, reeds, and waterproofed it with tar and pitch. She put the baby in the basket and laid it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile River. Hmm. Do y'all realize what that said? She released baby Moses. She prepared to send him away. She chose how he was going and where he was going. And I think about a lot of times when even if you have little kids now or when we were kids, when we went to school, our parents had prayed for us. They anointed us. Even when we weren't there, they put oil and stuff on our beds, anointing oil. And I think about Moses' mom. She was ingenious. She got a basket, but think about it. She didn't take that basket as it was. She didn't take it as it was and put Moses in that basket. See, she knew her child better than anything else. She knew the basket wasn't quite ready for her child. And that's how it is with us and the world. We think we're ready to get, go out in the world, but that mother said, you ain't quite ready yet. I have to do some work with you right now. See, she didn't put the baby in the basket because she had to work on that basket. She had to make sure it was just right for Moses. And a lot of times when we wanted to do things and our parents wouldn't let, let us, they were saying, I need to put some more word in you first. I need to put some more prayer in you first. I need to make sure you get a little more integrity. I need to make sure you walk in wisdom. I need to make sure you walk in love. You are not quite ready to go yet. So after Moses' mom waterproofed that basket, she put the baby in the basket and laid it among the reeds along the banks of the Nile River. She released Moses, prepared to send him away. She chose how he was going. Mothers are always creating ways to make, to make possibilities. And with God, all things are possible. Do you realize this Nile River that she was placing Moses in a basket and put on the Nile? This is a river that was infested with crocodiles and all kind of lizards, frogs, and all around the place, around that river was baboons. It was the longest river in the world. Imagine, this mother has hid her child so he wouldn't be killed by Pharaoh. But after she couldn't keep him anymore, she reconstructed a basket that she knew would fit him. 
that she knew that would get him to his destination, that she knew no water could get in it and drown him, that she knew no crocodile was gonna reach and eat him up, that she knew that she had heard from God. There is a Bible verse says, the desire of the righteous shall be granted. Proverbs 10, 24. I am convinced that this woman had prayed a prayer that nobody could change her mind, that nobody could tell her that she haven't heard from God. So she put him all in this basket. And I believe she prayed and said, Lord, he's in your hands now. She says, Lord, not my will, but thine will. Lord, use him for your glory. Lord, protect him where you send him. Lord, have somebody on the other end to reach down and pick him up. Lord, he's in your care. Lord, you said you would never leave me or forsake me. So I know you're not going to forsake my child. Lord, I know you're bigger than the Nile River, so I know you can keep it. Lord, I know you're bigger than the crocodiles, so I know you can keep it. Lord, I know you're bigger than the baboons, so they can't get it. Lord, you created the river, so that can't drown him. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Glory. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. But that comes out of obedience. When parents tell us things, when they do that, we got to trust the God that's in them. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. We thank you for mothers, God. We thank you. God, we thank you right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God is saying today to some of you, you have kids in difficult situations. And it's like you don't know what to do. I heard the Lord says, you just do what he told you to do. And he's going to do what he's big enough to do. And he's bigger than any problem you got. He's bigger than any problem you got. There is nothing that he can't do. There is nothing. And he said, see, you got to turn the problem loose. Because as long as you got it in your hands, it's not in the hands of a mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. And you got to stop. Stop listening to what people would say. Because I believe if Moses' mom had listened to anybody, they would have said, you are crazy. You putting that baby on the Nile River? Why are you letting him go to that school? And then you tell him because God said it. Okay? Why are you letting him go work here? Tell him God said it. You don't want your baby to go to that school? Don't send them. You don't want them to work on this job? Don't let them. But don't try to hold me back. That's what God told me to do. God told me to construct, reconstruct a basket. God told me, don't worry about the river. Worry about the God who made the river. Hallelujah. 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 And a lot of times, we're worried about the wrong things. We're worried about the wrong things. We don't need to worry about anything he created. We don't have to worry about it. All we have to do is put our trust in God. All right? And again, don't listen to people unless it's your godly spiritual parent. In other words, whoever God directs you to, okay? Amen. Amen. Have a seat. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 
and I loved his mother. She did all she could, and she released him. But then there came a day that was called Decision Day, Game Changer. A lot of times you have to make decisions that will change your life or somebody else's life. But it can never be about you, the parent. It has to be what is best for the child. What is best? <clears throat> and then verse 4, the baby sister then stood at a distance. This was half after the mother had placed the baby on the river. The baby sister then stood at a distance watching to see what would happen to him. The desire by the mother was to know if her baby survived the journey. The mother made a decision to send her daughter, Marion, to watch out for destiny of her child. Just know this, know who you are sending as a watchman. I'm going to repeat that. Know who you are sending as a watchman. Everybody that you think is for you is not for you. Know who you are sending. Know who you are sending. Destiny. Moses' mother made a decision to send her daughter to watch out for the destiny of her child, baby Moses. She was the watchman, and I thought about it. If, if, if the sister, Marion, had been a jealous person, she could have been another one that wanted to see him dead. Because she could have thought, think about it. When her mother kept him, surely when the mother hid him, she had to have him to herself, rocking him, thinking, I don't know how long I'm going to get to keep him. So this mother may not have gotten to spend a lot of time with the other children. Now, come on, y'all. Am I the only one in here who we know how siblings get, siblings get jealous of each other? Come on, raise your hand if you and your siblings, okay? But <clears throat> she didn't. She didn't. She was concerned about her little brother's health. So verse 5, soon, as, soon, soon Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe in the river, and her attendants were, uh, walked along the riverbank. When the princess saw the basket among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it for her. Desire, decision, destiny. Pharaoh's daughter, de Pharaoh's daughter's desire and decision to bathe in the Nile River put her at the right place at the right time, which sealed baby Moses' destiny. Don't think sometime you're just somewhere because you are somewhere. Why do you think God put you at these schools sometime? Why do you think your kids are friends with somebody else's kids? Why? Why do you think your somebody works with somebody? Because God is sealing destiny. God knows who has what, and that's what he is doing. The desire of Pharaoh's daughter to bathe at the Nile River at a specific time coincided with the decision to place baby Moses in a box on the Nile River so the two could meet, so destiny could be fulfilled. If God be for us, who can be against us? Say, only God. Only God. Only God. Thank you, God, for being for us. It's called divine timing. Verse 6, when the princess, who was Pharaoh's daughter, opened it, she saw the baby. Let me stop right there. It says, when the princess opened it, she saw the baby. And when I read that, I thought about it. How many times when we see things, uh, we're not about to open anything because we're going to turn our head like we didn't even see it. You know how you might see somebody need food, but you didn't see it. You understand? What, do y'all understand that? You see, but you don't see because you don't want to see. 
because you feel like if I don't want to see and act like I didn't see it, I don't have to help. But remember, God sits high and he looks low and he knows everything we do. But, but this woman saw something. And so when she saw it, Pharaoh's daughter, she didn't just say, I don't care what's in it. She was curious. She opened it and she saw the baby. The little boy was crying. And I kept thinking, gosh, he was crying now? But he probably didn't cry when his mother had him. Why? Because with God, all things are possible. They can make him so he wouldn't cry. So he didn't cry when he shouldn't have cried, but when he should have cried, he cried. Amen? <laughs> Woo! And she opened it and said, this must be one of the Hebrew children. Before holding him, she had compassion. It's before she even held him, she had compassion. How many times do we have to say, I got to figure out who the mama is and who the daddy is and who this, these kids belong to and let me get some more information on them and then I'll see what I want to do. She didn't have anything. She saw a need. She saw a baby. That's all she had. She had her eyes that were anointed to see there is somebody in trouble. Somebody that is in trouble. And she put the baby's well being before her desires. She wanted him to be fed and nursed right. Motherly sacrifices. Desire and decision. Her heart's desire was compassion. She didn't turn a blind eye to something that caught her attention. Mothers, we want to say thank y'all for not turning a blind eye to our knees. Thank you, mothers. Thank you. <laughs> Pharaoh's daughter rescued a baby her father wanted to kill. Is that ironic? Her father put out a decree to kill all of them, but she rescued who her father was trying to kill. Say, but God. You can't explain it. You don't need to explain it. But say, with God, all things are possible. God used the enemy's daughter to protect Moses from the river of death. Who has God used you to protect from death? Who has God used you? Or who is he telling you to protect? See, we're talking about motherly sacrifices. Whether you gave birth or not. It's not about whether you gave birth or not. It's about motherly sacrifices. Being caring, being a caretaker, being supportive, being protective, being protect. It's, that's what it's about, protection, loving, nurturing. That's motherly. Pharaoh's daughter saw what Moses was floating in, heard his scream, and saw his tears. Think about the many people who saw us near death and rescued us. I was rescued. Well, am I the only person in this church who was rescued? The rest of y'all, you pretty holy, been living holy since you were born, huh? <laughs> All right. I was rescued. I was rescued. And I want to thank all the peach people, the teachers, the, the mothers of the church, parents, friends, everybody who had a hand in rescuing me. Thank you. Thank you. And verse 7 says, Then the baby's sister approached the princess and said, Should I go and find one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? What I like about Mary and Moses' sister, she made sure she waited until Pharaoh's daughter opened the box with baby Moses. Her move was not premature. A lot of times we can do things prematurely and it aborts the whole situation. It aborts the whole situation. 
desire, Mary's desire to get her baby brother by saying the right thing to the right person at the right time. Moses' mother made the right decision to send her daughter. Decision, the daughter of Pharaoh saves baby Moses. The destiny, Moses' mother would groom him a little bit longer. So Moses would eventually be ready to lead the Hebrews out of Egypt because that was his destiny. So the enemy was doing everything in the world to snatch his destiny. Why do you think the enemy is, has been messing with you? Why do you think he tried to kill you when you were a baby? Why do you think he tried to kill you in them fast cars you were driving? Why do you think he's tried to kill you with drugs? Why do you think the enemy has tried everything, messing with, the, with everything? It's because he doesn't want you to fulfill your destiny. And it doesn't matter how old we are, he is still messing with us, but we got to know whose we are and who we belong to. If God be for us, who can be against us? He's tried. I think about it, he tried to kill me with cancer. He tried to kill me with cancer. But God says, uh, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified. He tried to kill me with depression. He's tried everything with depression over losing my father, losing my brother, losing my mama, but not so. Not so. Satan is a liar. He is a liar. Hallelujah. And he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But we know great is he that's in us than he that's in the world. So, and, and think about it. If he's picking on you, you must know you got a great destiny. Because guess what? He doesn't have to pick on the ones he already got. He already got y'all. He ain't worried about y'all. He wants the ones that he doesn't have his hands on. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So, Pharaoh's, and you know what? When I looked at uh, Marion, she was actually being mentored by Pharaoh's daughter. Think about it. When Marion went to get the baby, she waited till Pharaoh's daughter opened the box, and then I can see her just going over to her, asking her about, do you want me to go get a, you know, the baby's mother? And think about it. She was really being mentoring by Pharaoh's daughter. And you're probably saying, what do you want? So I actually saw this story with Pharaoh's daughter being not only was she the adoptive mother later, but she was a mentoring mother. Listen at this. Because guess what she did? Pharaoh's daughter was actually mentoring Mary on how to treat others. Others who are not like you. Think about it. They were different race, nationality, and gender. Weren't they? Yes. And she was showing her, it doesn't matter. I'm Egyptian, but this is a Hebrew. I'm a woman, but this is a boy. Do y'all see that? She showed her, don't worry about it. When you see a need, it's a need. It doesn't matter the color. It doesn't matter the gender. It doesn't matter the nationality. She was teaching her, make life better for somebody. When you go to someone with a need, make sure that they're better off after you have left them than when you met them. That's what she mentored her on. Hallelujah. Number nine, and she said, take this baby and nurse him for me. After, uh, and she was saying this to Moses' mother, Jochebed. Take this baby and nurse him for me. The princess told the baby's mother, I will pay you for help. So the woman took her baby home and nursed him. Jochebed, Moses' mom, was the caregiver for her own son. 
and she got paid for it, even though, <laughs> and she got paid for it. But even though Pharaoh's daughter didn't know it. And when I read that, I said, surely by the spirit, Jochebed had read Bishop Hash's book, The Listener Side of Prayer. I am convinced because this woman didn't open her mouth. But I figured she had already prayed, and as Bishop always tell us in the book, you know what? After you know you don't hear from God or read, you just got to listen and see what God has told you. So I'm convinced God told her, just remain silent. I'll fight your battle. So the desire and, des desire and decision, what did Pharaoh's daughter and Moses' mother have in common? They both desired to save Moses, and they both made the decision to put the welfare of baby Moses first. Desire, Pharaoh's daughter and Moses' mother wanted the baby fed and properly nursed so the baby could live. I believe Moses' mom had a desire to see who would love her child, who would be his mama. And I believe God allowed, God allowed Jochebed to meet her son's adopted mom. Decisions. Pharaoh's daughter took interest in someone else's child, spending money on him. How many people do we take interest in other folks' children? How many? How many resources are we willing? What resources are we willing to spend on somebody else's children? We must do what we can to make life better for others. And I think about it, when we know who we are, we don't have a problem helping somebody else. And that's something Lady Joyce always tell us. You don't need anyone else to tell you who you are. You know you have been made in the image of God, and you don't need anybody else to justify that. You know who you are. And that's what I believe about Moses' mother more than anything in the world. Motherly sacrifice is the last verse. Later, when the boy was older, his mother brought him back to Pharaoh's daughter, who adopted him as her own. The princess named him Moses, for she explained, I lifted him out of the water. And we want to say to all the mothers today, thank you for lifting us, your children, and other folks' children out of situations. We thank you for the many situations that you lifted us out of. You lifted us through prayer, thank you. You lifted us through the word of God, thank you. You lifted us through encouragement, thank you. Moses' mom was a great mother and showed motherly characteristics out of her situations. Remember, motherly sacrifices, desire, decision, decisions, and destiny. Motherly is all about we all can do that and be that. Affectionate, caretaking, devoted, kind, protective, loving. Mother sacri motherly sacrifices do not allow a child's hopes and dreams to die. Thank you, mothers, because we're all here today because y'all helped, uh, helped us not to allow our dreams and sacrifices to die. And with your own kids, don't allow their dreams to die. Don't allow them to die. I think about what Bishop Hash so often says. He says, be the best because there's greatness in you. Even tell your children that all the time. And I use it for my own self. That's for us too, amen? amen. And think about it. The bodies of waters that should have drowned Moses saved him. Now you think about that. What should have killed him saved him that Nile River because his mother did what God told her to do. When we do what God tell us to do, we'll always come out as winner, winners. Amen? Amen? Amen. At this time, close your eyes, please. Motherly sacrifices, desire, decisions, and destiny. Lord, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your love. 
Lord, we thank you for all the sacrifices that our spiritual mother has made for us. All the sacrifices that the mothers in the church, neighbors, our own birth mothers, or whoever raised us, Lord, we thank you for the sacrifices. Lord, in this day, we want to start from this day, not just honoring mothers on one day, but let's honor them throughout the year, Lord. Let's honor them throughout the year. And let us be like Jochebed was, Lord. Determined, listen to God, did what was best for her child. And let us be even like Pharaoh's daughter was. She was a mother before she came, became a mother by the resources she poured out, by having mercy on somebody else's child. Lord, and we thank you for the word today. Motherly sacrifices, desire, decision, and destiny. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Yes, amen. Ooh. Thank you, Jesus. At this time, we're going to have, um, I want you to just thank you, th I mean, think for a brief minute. I was thinking about this message, desire, decision, and destiny. And I heard the Spirit say, there are a lot of people here, your mother prayed for you. She desired that you accept Christ. She prayed that you accept Christ. And some, of, and some of the mothers might have been gone on. They might have gone on. But what greater gift to give your mother today other than the gift of salvation? What greater gift? You may have wanted her get, to get her a gift before she passed with this or that, and you couldn't. But she probably went to her, went to see Jesus thinking one day, he or she is going to accept the Lord one day. This could be the day. And even if your mother is still alive, give the greatest gift that you can give. And I think about even um, Jesus when he says, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup, he was talking about the cup of suffering, pass from me. But then he said, nevertheless, he says, not as I will, but as thou will. So today, Jesus had a desire to be the savior of the world. Not only did he have a desire, decision was made for you and me. And that's why his destiny was, destiny was sealed, to seal our destiny. All we have to do is accept the gift. So right now, if there is one, you heard the message. It doesn't even matter who's beside you. Even if you're in a backsliding state or you just want to get things right, because you know on Mother's Day, of all days, your mother would be happy to know. So if there is one saying, you know what? I want the love of God. I'm tired. I want to be a blessing today. I want to give my life to Lord. If there is one, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. If there is one, thank you. I see that hand back there. Just raise your hand. See, this is about your destiny. This is about spending the rest of your life with the Lord. This is about the eternal love of God. Oh, thank you. I see that hand. Okay, would you stand, please? Would you stand? Amen. Amen. And would you come forward, please? Thank God. And he's not the only one that's in here.
There's somebody else. You came to church this morning thinking, God, there's got to be more. Lord, this is the gift I want. I want the gift of salvation. If there is another one, before we close it, raise your hand. Ushers, help me, please. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. You stand right here. Bless you. Today is the best day of your life. Today, you made one of the greatest decisions that you could ever make. And God says, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. He said he's loved you with an everlasting love. And today, we are going to have someone. I just want you to repeat after me. So, Lord, thank you for sending me here today. Lord, thank you for forgiving me of all my sins. Lord, I know, Jesus, you are the Son of God. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me and washing my sins away. Amen. The Bible says there.